These are 13 people executed for crimes they may not have or did not commit. It's impossible to hear their tragic stories and not long for justice on their behalf. Number 13. Cameron Todd Willingham Two days before Christmas in 1991, the Willingham family home in Texas burned down. Stacy Willingham, the matriarch of the family, was out doing some last-minute Christmas shopping. Cameron Willingham was at his home with his three daughters, Amber Louise Quickendall, age 2, and the twins, Carmen Diane Willingham and Cameron Marie Willingham, both age 1. Cameron was able to escape the blaze with minor burns, but his daughters tragically were not so lucky. All three died in the fire. If this wasn't horrific enough for Cameron and Stacy, Cameron was charged with capital murder for his own three daughters after Texas arson investigators claimed the fire was an intentional murder plot. What followed was a sham of a trial where things like Cameron owning Iron Maiden posters and having a tattoo of a skull and snake were brought in to suggest he may have been a cold-blooded killer. Sadly, this was apparently enough. Despite pleading innocence all the way up to 2004, his execution still went ahead. Later, more reliable arson experts claimed that the science behind Cameron's conviction was bunk. In the words of former Louisiana State University fire instructor Kendall Ryland, it made me sick to think this guy was executed based on this investigation. They executed this guy and they've got just no idea, at least not sufficiently if he set the fire or if the fire was even intentionally set. Number 12. David Wayne Spence We remain in Texas, one of the United States' most enthusiastic executors, for the death of David Wayne Spence, who was executed in 1997. The crime he was accused of was undeniably horrific. A triple sexual assault and murder case from 1982 where three teenagers were found dead next to Lake Waco. All evidence pointed to the deaths being a case of mistaken identity. Three other people were supposed to have been murdered in a supposed life insurance scam. Investigators believed that career criminal David Wayne Spence had been hired to carry out the hit. Well, one overzealous narcotics cop believed he was responsible. The lead detective on the case was quoted, nothing from the investigation ever led us to any evidence that he was involved. The Waco police lieutenant also said, my opinion is that David Spence was innocent. Nothing from the investigation ever led us to any evidence that he was involved. But he was sentenced to death anyway partially on the testimony of prison inmates who later admitted that they'd been bribed to give their testimony. Shortly before his execution, Spence said to the families of the 1982 murder victims, I want you to understand I speak the truth when I say I didn't kill your kids. Honestly, I've not killed anyone. I wish you could get the rage from your hearts and you could see the truth and get rid of the hatred. Number 11. Timothy Evans now over to England. While the death penalty was abolished there in 1965, they've got plenty of wrongful executions under their belt before the cutoff. One such execution was the death of Timothy Evans in 1950. He tearfully confessed to the accidental killing of his wife during a botched abortion and accepted the grim consequences. Timothy wasn't in possession of his full mental faculties and was easily persuaded during his three-day trial. He was charged with double murder for his wife and unborn child before being hanged at Pentonville Prison. But sickeningly, Timothy Evans wasn't a murderer at all. He'd been taken advantage of by an intelligent and malicious serial killer who happened to board with him. Ex-policeman John Reginald Christie, who would later be convicted of the murders of six people. In light of new evidence, Timothy Evans was given a posthumous pardon nearly two decades later. In a sense, he was just as much a victim of the terrifying John Reginald Christie as any of the others that died more directly by his hand. Number 10. Carlos de Luna Back to Texas, in 1983, a 24-year-old gas station attendant named Wanda Lopez was murdered during a botched robbery by what two witnesses reported as a Hispanic assailant. An APB was put out and soon after, a nearby jogger, Carlos de Luna, was brought in. And this is where things get horrifying. Despite there being no substantial evidence against him, Carlos still matched the description. He was convicted, sentenced to death, and executed in 1989. But while this is tragic, this isn't the weird part. All signs point to a completely different man with the same first name, Carlos Hernandez being the true killer. In fact, Carlos Hernandez was an unstable man with a criminal history and even confessed to the murder multiple times. The eerie part is that the two Carloses looked exactly the same, so much so that their own families couldn't tell the two apart from photos. Sometimes real life is even stranger than fiction. Number 9. Derek Bentley Back to England for the bizarre case of Derek Bentley. Derek, much like Timothy Evans, suffered from mental problems. In IQ tests, he scored 66 compared to the average 98, suggesting he was mentally challenged to some extent. He and his younger partner in crime, Christopher Craig, broke into a candy factory with the intent to commit robbery. Derek was armed with a knuckle duster and Craig with a revolver. 
Police soon intercepted and apprehended the two criminals. Derek had already been grabbed and restrained, and Craig was engaged in a tense standoff with his revolver. Police ordered Craig to surrender the weapon, and Derek, choosing his words poorly, told Craig to let them have it. Craig interpreted this as an order to attack, and shot and killed the police officer on the scene. Craig was too young to be executed, but although Derek had not fired the lethal shot, he was charged with inciting the murder and later executed for it in 1953 by hanging. Craig left prison in 1963 after serving a decade for murder and became a plumber. Like Timothy Evans, Derek was posthumously pardoned for his crime in 1998. Number 8. George Kelly Still in England, the Cameo Cinema murders are two of the most infamous gangland killings from the city of Liverpool, the city that gave us the Beatles. A movie theater owner and his assistant were both shot dead during a botched robbery, and in the following days police officers essentially interviewed the entire Liverpool criminal underworld, looking for answers. A number of witnesses pointed to 27-year-old laborer George Kelly. It was a classic setup by police more eager to make a caller than catch the real criminals. Charles Connolly, the man suspected of being Kelly's accomplice, was intimidated into pleading guilty because he feared getting the death penalty too, and this only sealed Kelly's fate. He was hanged in 1950, despite an entirely different man named Donald Johnson actually confessing to the murder the year before. Number 7. Frank Lee Smith Now to Florida for the tragic death of Frank Lee Smith. Smith is slightly different from the other entries on this list because he was never actually executed by the state, but he did die of cancer on death row while waiting for his execution, a depressingly common affair for death row inmates, innocent or otherwise. But make no mistake, Frank Lee Smith was innocent. Smith was convicted of murder and was sentenced to death. He remained on death row for 14 years before succumbing to his cancer. However, he was completely exonerated from the crime by DNA evidence, 11 months after his death. If he was never wrongly convicted, he could have spent his last years with his loved ones, rather than rotting in a prison cell for a crime he didn't commit. Number 6. Mahmoud Matan Back to the UK. In 1952, for perhaps the most clear-cut case of racial profiling on this entire list. Somali immigrant Mahmoud Matan was accused of a brutal murder in Wales by a known racist despite Matan being in a completely different place and having a full alibi. However, his poor grasp of English led him to be trounced during his brief trial, where the prosecutor referred to him as, quote, a semi-civilized savage. Just kidding, that wasn't actually his prosecutor, that was his defense lawyer. That's how stacked the cards were against Mahmoud Matan. He was quickly convicted and sentenced to death, leaving his wife and three children. His wife was never even told of his execution date. She only found out he was dead when she went to visit him in prison and found the notice of his death pinned to the door. The family was later given compensation for this horrific injustice, nearly 50 years later, that is. Number 5. Leo Jones Now back to Florida for the execution of Leo Jones. Jones was accused of the murder of a police officer, a crime that he confessed to and then was convicted and sentenced to death. However, Jones repeatedly insisted that the confession was coerced and that he was actually innocent. This fell upon deaf ears and he was executed in 1998, 17 years after his 1981 conviction. However, some pretty horrifying new evidence soon came to light. The two officers who arrested Jones and extracted the confession were both fired due to a bevy of ethical issues. Most vital for us, though, is the fact that one of the two officers was accused of being an enforcer who regularly used intimidation and even torture to force bogus confessions out of his suspects. This led to an awful lot of credence to the statements of Leo Jones, but sadly, it was too late to do anything about it. Number 4. Dr. Holly Harvey Crippen for those genuinely enthused in criminal history and the history of forensic investigation, Dr. Holly Harvey Crippen is one of the most famous murderers of all time. He was believed to have murdered his wife before trying to flee to Canada with his lover. However, he was the first ever murderer to be caught with the aid of a remote telegram, allowing the people on the ship to apprehend Crippen and bring him back to England. His fate was sealed when the skin of a human torso was found behind the walls of his home with an appendectomy scar that matched one on Crippen's missing wife. He was tried and hanged for the murder. However, in 2007, almost a century after Crippen's execution in the early 1900s, researchers discovered that the skin used to convict him may not have actually been that of Crippen's wife. It was actually the skin of a man. This has led to the possibility that Crippen was actually set up by pathologist Sir Bernard Spilsbury, who simply intended to use the case to advance the public perception of his own forensic methods. Number 3. Dominique Ray Alabama made headlines in 2019 with the execution of Dominique Ray. Ray was a Muslim and as such requested an imam in his execution chamber to provide religious comfort before he died. 
in much the same way a Christian inmate can receive his comfort from a reverend or priest. But Alabama denied this to Ray. And not just that, when people looked into Ray's execution, it became clear that the entire basis of his execution was essentially baseless. Ray was accused and convicted of robbery and the murder of a 15-year-old girl in 1999. However, the only witness placing him in Selma, Alabama when the crime took place was Marcus Odin, a severely mentally ill man who had first confessed to the crime himself before accusing Ray to save his own skin. Marcus suffered from severe schizophrenia and couldn't be trusted to make his own testimony but the courts insisted on his competency. Dominique Ray was executed on the words of a man whom nobody should have trusted. Number 2. Robert Pruitt And of course, we return to Texas again. Robert Pruitt was already in a correctional facility for unrelated offenses when it seemed that he had murdered prison officer Daniel Nagel for giving him a disciplinary write-up for eating a sandwich in an unauthorized area. The corpse of Nagel was found next to a bloody shiv and a torn-up copy of the write-up. Seemed like a pretty open and shut case, and Pruitt was executed for it in 2017. However, much like Timothy Evans, Pruitt ended up actually being the fall guy for a far more sinister plot going on. Turns out that Nagel was investigating a major corruption accusation against some of his fellow officers who were working with organized crime power players in the jail to launder money. Nagel got too close and was murdered by the gangs for trying to expose the corruption. Four of his co-workers were indicted for the exact kind of corruption Nagel was investigating on the same day Pruitt was indicted for Nagel's murder. He just happened to be in the wrong place in the wrong time. And finally, number 1. Richard Masterson Yep. Texas again. Richard Masterson is a unique case because not only is it very likely he didn't actually commit the murder he was accused of, it's also extremely possible that no murder was committed at all. Masterson, in a state of withdrawal from addictive stimulants that caused erratic and often suicidal thoughts and behavior, confessed to the murder of his sexual partner Darren Honeycutt after performing a chokehold on him during consensual erotic asphyxiation. The medical examiner who performed the autopsy on Honeycutt reinforced the idea that they were looking at capital murder here. And in 2016, Masterson was executed for it, but things really aren't that simple. It's now widely believed that the medical examiner who performed the autopsy on Honeycutt was not reliable in any regard, and the jury was not made aware of the fact that they could convict Masterson on a lesser charge such as manslaughter. Subsequent examinations on Honeycutt have shown that he very likely died of a heart attack, meaning no murder was committed here. While on death row, Masterson converted to Catholicism and kept in touch with Pope Francis himself, who opposed Masterson's execution. But sadly, in the end, it was all just too little too late. Something you hear depressingly often in the cases of miscarried justice like this. And there you have it, 13 people either definitively proven innocent after their deaths, or at the very least with strong evidence pointing toward innocence. Over 1,500 people have been executed in the United States alone since 1975. And while execution is far less frequent in the Western world these days, many people still sit on death row pleading innocence or requesting appeals. It raises the question, is it right for the death penalty to continue? given how many innocent lives have been collateral damage. Let us know where you stand on this debate down in the comments. Now check out Innocent on Death Row, here's what you actually get when you're released, and 50 insane execution and death penalty facts that will shock you for more horrifying facts about this controversial punishment.